Today, the workplace is more dynamic and diverse than it's ever been. Four generations coming together to contribute to our economy's growth. But new challenges in the workplace are growing each and every day. This podcast brings corporate leaders to you, sharing solutions and strategies to enhance your company's culture and bring your people together. Rise Up For You presents its newest podcast series, Workplace Solutions, People Matter. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Natalina Nasserdine. I know most of you are familiar with me, and I am the founder of Rise Up For You. And I'm so excited to be back here again on Wednesday for our podcast, Workplace Solutions. And today we have an awesome guest. Her name is Robin Sinclair. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Absolutely. So I always love to start off the conversation uh, by having our guests brag. So tell us about all the great work that you're doing, you know, the nonprofit work, the leadership work that you're doing. And tell us a little bit about your journey and yourself. Um, Sure. Well, thank you also for having me. And uh, I love bragging and telling about what Fieldstone does. But before I get to Fieldstone, I started out in education. Um, I used to provide college and career guidance to um, teens in the high school, and then I got into administration, and then I jumped into the nonprofit space, and it was really the first time that I had experienced mission-based leadership, where people, I used to say, if they played the lottery and won the lottery, they would still show up for work the next day. They might not come in as early, and they might not stay as late, but they would definitely still show up, and I thought, those are the people that I really want to be around, and so I worked for Habitat for Humanity for a bit. And then I had the opportunity to be an executive director. So I worked for a group home for five years, and then I went to a shelter for runaway and homeless teenagers for another five years. Um, And in that time, I had participated in leadership groups at Fieldstone. So I was very familiar with Fieldstone. And um, then they had an opportunity for me to work in Orange County and work with our network and really help our leaders, um, really give them the tools and the skills that they need in order to succeed. So Fieldstone started out as home building, in San Diego County, Orange County, and Salt Lake City. And they were grant makers for many, many years in these three regions. And when they would make grants, they would oftentimes ask the leader, you know, what do you need? And the leader would say, we need support. We need capital support. We need funding. And they said, what else do you need? And they said, no, our leaders are lonely. They need an opportunity to come together, to share best practices, to share resources, and to help each other, lift each other up. And so the Founders of Fieldstone started the group and they worked with some of the local nonprofit leaders at the time. And we're talking almost 35 years ago and um, created curriculum and did research to support the curriculum. And we started growing this program. So what I'm most proud of, I will say, is since the pandemic, we have really responded um, uniquely to our leaders. You know, whatever they have needed in this last year and now a couple months, we have reached out to them, said, what do you need? And then we will give them what they need. So if they need a cohort of their peers, we'll connect them. If they need executive coaching, we'll connect them with an executive coach. And so we have formal programs to help our leaders in that capacity. And then we started a brand new program this year called Fieldstone for You. And where we would say, what do you need? And they would say, A perfect example is we just had a request from one of our leaders and they asked for subject, an expert that could talk about how do you deal with difficult people, whether it's vendors or a board or volunteers or staff or what if your leader is a difficult person. So I found a fabulous trainer who's one of the um, people in our network and she's going to provide the content. So we'll bring in speakers. We've had everything from chair yoga. We're going to have budgeting all the way to bringing in an HR attorney to help um, people navigate, you know, what this post pandemic um, employer world looks like. So it's soup to nuts. And our goal is, again, they're not coming to us to learn how to be leaders. They're already leaders, but we're really kind of helping them hone their craft. Yeah, I love that. And it's so important. And first off, thank you for all the great work that you've done over the past, you know, many years, because servant leadership is so important. And nonprofit organizations are really the backbone of the community. So what you're doing is great. I'd love to die. You know, it's so this is very timely. And the reason why I say that is because even my team and I, we've been talking about how it can be very lonely at the top for leaders, right? There, there's a lot that they have to navigate and go through, you know, between their team and, you know, operations and building the organization and supporting the community. 
So I'd love to just ask you, you know, from your personal professional experience, what would you say are like the top things that come to mind that these leaders in the nonprofit particularly need more support in? Um, for the CEOs, it's always board support, how to navigate the relationship with your board of directors, because these are all volunteers. These are people that have day jobs. They have very important lives. They are, some are still working, some are retired, and they're giving of their heart and soul to this organization. So they are volunteers, but yet they really are the governing body of the nonprofit organization. So oftentimes, they need to know how to navigate that because if a CEO is having an issue with their board, they can't go to their board for that. And so it's that's where that CEO cohort is magic because then they come together with their peers and they really find out that, hey, I'm not the only one that's experiencing this. You know, there are other people out there and then they come together. And as I said, it's really sharing best resources and best practices and connecting them with maybe a consultant that could come in and do like some strategic planning with the board. So for the CEO, I would say almost always, there are some board issues. Um, occasionally you will have um, issues with um, a staff member. So those are, you know, we try to lift it up at a higher level. So we talk about just, again, how do you deal with difficult people? How do you motivate? How do you get somebody to be self-motivated, which is something that we all need. Um, we don't get into the nuts and bolts like fundraising and that sort of thing, because there are so many fabulous organizations and resources out there. And so many, you know, online and in person, and there's educational program. So we don't get into that kind of thing. Again, ours is more um, really strategy and really relational. And then for the, uh, we have an emerging leader group. So this is for the chief operating officers, the chief program people, the development officers. So oftentimes their issues might be, how do they work with their CEO? Or how do I um, pat myself on the back in a really professional and humble way so that I get recognized so that I can climb the ladder. A lot of times it's, you know, we talk about career pathing and how do you get from being a development officer to becoming the executive director? So we'll talk a little bit about that. We talk about what is managing, what is leading, what is the difference between the two? And then something that we really talk about a lot is controlling what we can control. Because to just come in and say, so-and-so I just can't get along with, it's not really, you know, what can you do about that? So what we can control is ourselves and we can control how we relate to them and how we work with them. So we we talk a lot about the soft skills and um, and the among with the peers, you know, they just get so much from one another. So it's really it's a beautiful thing to watch, to be honest. Well, and and what you I mean, you're speaking my language, our whole entire company rise up for you. That's what we do each and every day is really helping enhance these soft skills and corporations with leaders, you know, with emerging professionals. So I think that the work that you're doing is probably the most critical work, right? Because we know from research that 75 to 80 percent of our success, whether it's an individual or an organization, really comes down to these skills. So, I mean, the work that you're doing, I'm going to clap and promote for it all day because we need it. And, you know, we've done a lot of work in nonprofits, and I think that you're providing a space that's very important because, as you mentioned, you know, you can't always go to the board to digest some of these challenges. And you also don't want to go to your team, which we've seen yeah. before as well. And that just creates, you know, a, an ugly dynamic that, you know, in particular with a nonprofit and, you know, please add your opinion to this, Robin, you know, we're there to serve, you know, there's always a different energy in a nonprofit organization because you're typically not there because you're making this ginormous salary, but because there's a purpose, there's a meaning, there's an emotional connection behind the work that you're doing. No, you're absolutely right. But the, but the truth is, you know, it's a business, you're running a business just like anything else. So for, for profit versus a not for profit. I mean, the difference is how we file our taxes, but you are subject to all of the, you know, state laws and HR and all the compliance issues that any other business. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's instead of having maybe 10 customers, you have 10 donors and, you know, you don't want to have one donor that is your whole budget because if that donor chooses to go elsewhere and that happens just like a business has a customer, you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. You want to diversify. So, um, yeah, I mean, the challenges are unique, as you said, in the sense that you're right, people have more of that passion, but otherwise it's just, it's a business, you know, it's really the same. So we try to get them to recognize that, you know, we're doing important work. We're, you know, we're helping alleviate homelessness. We're working with human trafficked young people. 
We're working with foster teams. We're working with veterans. We're working with the arts. We're working with the faith community, with education. Now, we work with all sectors. As long as you're a 501c3, you get to participate in our network and become part of this vibrant group of people that really come to lean on each other. When I went through it in 2008, I was a fairly new executive director, and I had a small budget at the time. And the person that I really connected with in my learning group was somebody that was at the time managing a $3 million budget. I had a board of 15, he had a board of 35. And I remember thinking, what do I have to offer? But I did have a lot to offer. And he, you know, you learn by teaching and you learn by supporting one another. And so he helped me grow. And I think I helped him. And then I have reflected back on that experience. And, you know, I do a lot of executive coaching and our coaches do a fabulous job one-on-one -on -one with our leaders. So, you know, again, our goal is kind of to meet our leaders wherever they are in their leadership journey. I, I love that. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you for sharing all of that. So at this point, I love to jump into the power section of the interview. I'm just going to ask you some quick, you know, rapid questions and then whatever uh -huh. comes to mind is great. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. The, the, the first question is, if you can leave this world, we like to call it with the golden nugget. What would your final golden nugget or your final message be to the world? Hmm. Be a resource for people, connect people. Um, I think, you know, we we tend to just become very isolated, especially in light of what we've just been dealing with in the last 14 months. Um, so I think, you know, just get out there and find out what people need and try to connect people with other people because we are the best resources that we have that we are. Absolutely. And we do a lot of work with values, whether we're talking about, you know, company culture values or personal values, which are very important as well. So what's a value that you have personally that's an absolute non-negotiable for you? Fairness, 100 percent fairness. I mean, I, you know, I think I go a little cuckoo when I feel that somebody has been mistreated. And um, and, you know, sometimes we see that in new leaders where they're taken advantage of, um, especially some of the younger people that are coming into the workforce and they feel that they are either being underpaid or under recognized. So um, a lot of our executive coaching is really helping people find their voice. And so I, I like to help people find their voice. I think that it's really important to be um, recognized and appreciated. Wonderful. And then I have one final question for you. But before we get there, tell us a little bit about where we can find you. I know I know we can connect with you here on LinkedIn if anyone's interested. And then please direct us to the website and the best place to go to learn more. Yes. Yeah, so we have um, we're on Instagram, Fieldstone Leadership OC. We're on Facebook. So we do have um, Fieldstone Leadership in Orange County. There also is a Fieldstone Leadership in San Diego, but we are separate. So for all of our Orange County people, and we do have people in Los Angeles in our network and the Inland Empire, as long as you're serving in Orange County, we would love to have you inquire and learn more about us. Um, and then we have a fabulous website, and it's Fieldstone Leadership Network, Orange County, or you could just Google it and you'll find us. And um, you can get on our mailing list. We have every Friday, we send out um, a career exchange with you know, maybe 20 nonprofit jobs and people will send us their jobs. So if anybody that is listening is looking to get into the nonprofit space or move from one position to another, you wanna get up on our, our, our mailing list. And then we also have incredible speaker series that are open to the public. Some are only offered to our network. Others are open to everybody. And I usually post those on LinkedIn. So make sure you follow me, Robin Sinclair on LinkedIn and Fieldstone Leadership Orange County on LinkedIn. And you can see our speaker series because our, and then we have a YouTube channel, Fieldstone Leadership Orange County. And so you can find several of our webinars that we've had in this past year on there. And they are just phenomenal. Our training has just been off the charts. I'm so proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish this past year. Awesome. Very good. Well, more resources, the better. And we have a lot of people listening in from Canada. We have someone from India and Arizona. So we might need to have some expansion soon, Robin. <laughs> hey, you know, we have a fabulous board of directors and they're looking to, you know, be visionary. So I would love to go back to my board and say, hey, let's set up something in Canada or let's set up something in India. So my board is phenomenal. Absolutely. Love that. So Robin, thank you again so much. My final question is, as you know, we are rise up for you. What comes to your mind when you hear that phrase rise up for you? I think it's lifting up people and really um, helping them to be better in where, whatever capacity that is, whether it's personal or professional. I see that what you do is helping, you know, anybody 
just to be better and to uh, to be elevated. So I, I think what you're doing is fabulous. So thank you. Thank you, Robin. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you everyone for tuning in. It's such an honor to have you here. Again, my name is Natalina Nasruddin, the founder of Rise Up For You, and this is our Workplace Solutions Podcast. I'm here every Wednesday. Sometimes I have amazing guests like Robin. Sometimes I just show up by myself and I add value. Either way, we're here and we love it. Thank you so much. We will see you next week, Robin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.